Boom! Headshot! Introducing the Philotactic Spiral Pulse Rifle. Ladies love a gun with big impact, and this one is the biggest. I mean, it's huge. Come stock with kill clip, so what that means, you get a kill, you reload it, you got 25% more impact. Now we got under over, shoot someone with a generating shield, 20% more impact. Ricochet rounds gives more stability, no extra range. Some people lack range on their pulse rifles. To that I say, stop being a little bitch, learn to move closer. You could use high impact, but I like ricochet, because more stability, less flinch. Pulse Rifle What you are seeing right here is the stats of the gun. It has a rate of fire of 340, impact 33, aim assist 31. It's 40 to the head, 22 to the body. This means you can kill guardians in two full bursts. Two. When you got under over active, it's 48 to the head, 26 to the body, two shot kill. When you got kill clip, you hit 50 to the head, 27 to the body. When you got both perks active, you hit 60 to the head, 33 to the body. Now for you titans and warlock fellas out there, you hit 50 to the head, 27 to the body with well or weapons of light. You put at least two surge mods on, you hit 53 to the head, 29 to the body. Now with all those perks combined, you get 80 to the head or 44 to the body. One burst kill. Uh, that was a fun intro. For those who might have been around the space for a long time, you might recognize it. Uh, from an eight-year-old Cami Cakes video. The review of the Judith D. hand cannon. Uh, and I really, really liked that video, and it stayed in my mind all this time. And when I was finally looking into this gun, and the perks surrounding it, and the fact that Under Over is a 20% damage booster, uh, that's stackable with other perks, by the way. I wondered if this was possible and then I tested it yeah, yeah it was uh, and the fact that this is the first weapon in destiny 2 history is I think other than Judith D there's like one other gun that could do it with like final round and lucky round but you're dumping a lot of bullets other than those weapons this is the first primary in destiny 2 history legendary primary that can one shot uh, you know other than bows because those aren't real primaries so when I was originally running these numbers on like a computer calculator, we had 40.08, the base damage of a high impact pulse rifle. We had a 1.2 multiplier for under over, 1.25 multiplier uh, for kill clip, 1.25 for weapons of light or well of radiance, which is the highest general buff you can get in PvP. Lumina does more in PvE, but in PvP it's been tuned down specifically. Uh, and then finally was the surge mods. When I got to the surge mods, in PvP, times one I think is 3%, times four is up to like 6%. So technically, it was supposed to be doing less than 80 damage. However, if you saw the clip uh, later, <gasps> while I was uh, doing 80 to the head with times two surge, with times four, which I'll get to in a second, you're dealing 82, which is a lot more. It's actually closer to 1.09. I'm saying is I think there was some math inaccuracies because in game I think they handle surges a little differently. If a surge mod doesn't push you up a full damage point, I think in game it will always round to give you an extra one. Because that was what I was noticing. Even though the math said I shouldn't be going up a damage point here, it was. So there's a uh, there's that damage boosts appear to be better on low impact weapons because it will scale up each time. Who knows? I'll have to do more testing for that. Uh, but that's crazy, right? I'm getting almost two and a half full damage points more than what the math was saying, which means those one taps were way easier to get. It's also probably good at this point to mention this isn't the only pulse rifle that can get this roll. Messenger, which is unarguably just a better gun, can roll with the same perk combination of under, over, and kill clip. However, activating surge mods is a lot more difficult on a kinetic weapon versus an energy weapon. Uh, again, I'm going to speak about this in a second, but 
you'll see. The second issue about Messenger, even though it's a better primary, is that you can't use it with conditional. And conditional is such a powerful gun in the current sandbox, and almost mandatory in threes, that it's really not recommended to not keep it, at least if you can make a build work with conditional, do so. Also important to note, with the Into the Light event coming soon, LC's rifle, so long as it stays a high impact pulse rifle, will also be able to get the under over and kill clip roll, meaning it will also be able to one burst. With it being void, there's also the chance that we can remove surge mods in favor of like volatile rounds and possibly still retain the one tap that way. All right, I put it off a few times. How do we get the surge mods? So times one for my testing didn't work. There might be a very small window where someone strafes into the rift and then dies. I've also been doing all my testing at tier 10 resilience as it's just a very common number that everyone's running and I shouldn't be assuming low resilience if I want to get a true one tap. The ways you can get them are as follows. Pick up two surge mods and hope and pray. That's probably the least consistent method, although it's the only method you can do if you're going solo. The second method is to be running one of three exotics. On the Arc Warlock, you can run Mantle of Battle Harmony, which is basically like a surge version of Rampage after you get a kill once your super is procced. Which is why in the current gameplay, I haven't been popping my super, even though I'd probably get like three a game. The second method on Stasis Hunter is to use uh, Bakras, which is the post dodge teleport. You also gain access to times four surge mods on Stasis and Arc weapons. Though I wouldn't recommend that because it requires you to dodge after a kill, so you're burning time with your kill clip. Or you do the opposite where you dodge into the kill, then reload, but you're again facing a very, very small window of time. And the last way is Arc Titan's Eternal Warrior. Yeah, don't do that. You need like five kills or super kills into that lineup. So it's just way harder to get. If you're looking to get the one tap specifically, Arc Warlock with Battle of Harmony is probably the best way to go. Except, <laughs> there's one more build to talk about. And that is Stasis Titan. Who can basically have infinite charge with light. We've probably seen the videos. Uh, I've been running it a lot this season. With elemental charge uh, and a crystal spam build, usually with horror frost, especially if you have multiple titans, it is trivial to get that times two surge mod up at all times. Though you're more than likely going to have to take a stat penalty in order to run that, it'll definitely be worth it in the long run. Having infinite times two surge mods on any weapon is really helpful. However, that does also mean you're now bumming off your teammates for well and bubble, but you're already doing that with the Arc Warlock build anyways. So, we're getting back to the review, because this is technically a review, I guess. Uh, is the one tap viable or feasible? Uh, it's possible, <laughs> is what I'll say. I've done quite a few games with this loadout, and unfortunately it was all in SBMM Iron Banner, which might not be the best place to do it. But even then, the odds of actually getting everything to line up perfectly, where I have my super, I get a kill with the pulse rifle, I reload near my teammate's bubble or well, and then somebody very close by is also popping a rift. There's a lot to go right. Unlike before, where it was just shoot until you don't hear a ding, or get a rampage kill clip proc at the same time, this is a lot more to it. This is literally everything in the sandbox that could possibly go your way. Now this doesn't mean the weapon isn't viable overall though, just less likely you're going to get the one burst. Rocking four different ways to boost your damage means that a lot of times two or three of them are going to be up and you're going to be punching with a lot more range than you're expecting. This pulse or messenger if you decide to choose is going to be a very, very nasty weapon. A lot of times if someone's in a rift, you're just going to drop them. The reason why I'm running kill clip by the way outside of the one burst is at max overshield without any damage boosts, under over alone lets you two burst somebody at full overshield in the rift. So you can just kill somebody in a rift, get kill clip, walk around and farm the rest of the team. Important to note as well, even if you're not maining this weapon, having it in your back pocket when you see a rift popped, just to stomp on it, is probably still worth it. Unfortunately, there's no penalties or restrictions from swapping your loadout mid-game 
apart from swapping from special to special, meaning that basically one primary slot can cover all distances if you're boring enough to choose so. This will win you rounds, unironically. I've seen it happen. People will pop a rift in a key spot that otherwise we'd have no real way of fighting against, especially if I'm alone. I put on the pulse, I challenge them when they don't expect it, I two burst, and I've basically won the round from there. With that, I don't think there's any much more to say about the pulse rifle, other than, you know, there's three of them. But it was it was too funny to let go of the initial opening, to just shoehorn them all in. Uh, hopefully you can enjoy the rest of the gameplay as much as you can enjoy SBMM PvP. It's pretty boring to watch. Hopefully that's addressed, but you know, we'll see. Pushing for victory. Punish them for it. One minute left. Double down. Yes. Three down. Thirty seconds remaining. You're defeated. Fight again. Persistence is. Key. 